Okay, so reading another process's memory in Rust using process vm read v. The process vm read v function is part of the nix crate, and we'll want to include this crate as a dependency in our cargo.toml file before starting to this tutorial. So let me first create a new package and include this crate. So we'll go to our cargo.toml file, and under dependencies, we'll write nix equals the latest version, which at this moment is this version. And then we can hop over to our uh, main.rs file here. And we might also want to do a cargo build real quick so we can get the dependencies here. Okay, so the process vm read v function can look intimidating at first, but it's actually pretty easy to use. So let's first quickly analyze the function prototype. Okay, so starting with the PID. This is the process ID of the target process. It may be useful for you to write a function to traverse the proc directory in order to automatically find the process ID of the desired process. And there are many resources online that can help with this. For the purposes of this tutorial though, I'll be using the PID of command to get the process ID. Next, local IOV. This is a mutable reference to a list of buffers. Data that is copied from the remote process will end up here, and each buffer in the list is of the type IO slice mute, which is a wrapper around a list of U8 values. So, in short, local IOV is a list of buffers, and each buffer is a list of bytes. Finally, remote IOV. This is a reference to a list of remote IO VECs. Remote IO VEC is simply a struct that identifies where the source data is within the remote process and how many bytes to read. Because local IOV and remote IOV are lists, this allows you to read multiple values from the remote process in a single call. This is outside the scope of this tutorial, but let me know if you need help with this. Okay, so in this tutorial, I'll be reading the health value of the local player in Counter-Strike. So I'll need the PID of Counter-Strike and the address of the health value. I can get the PID of Counter-Strike by using PID of, and as to not complicate this tutorial, I already have the health address. Okay, so here I have Counter-Strike open, and I have the health address already input in there as a constant, and I'm gonna run the command PID of and then the process name here to get the PID. So I'll just copy that and then we'll save that here. So uh, next we'll define the local IOV. So we'll wanna do uh, let local IOV equal IO slice mute like that. And then the new, and we need to do a mutable reference to the data. So the io slice new method, it takes a reference, a mutable reference to a list of u8 values, which we'll define here. So this is the underlying uh, buffer right here. Since the health value I'm reading from the process is a four byte integer, data, the variable we've defined here, will have a length of four. So we'll take a look at how to create an i32 value from this byte buffer in a moment. But next, let's define remote IOV, which is going to be a remote IOVEC. And it needs the base address here, which is the address of the health. And then it needs the length of the uh, data we're reading, which is going to be four, for the same reason as mentioned before. I have an i32 value that I'm reading. Okay, I made a few typos here. I misdefined my health address here, and then also I need to include the uh, remote IO vec thing there. So, fix that. So, uh, the syntax for this is simple. We've defined the base address of the source data here, and then we have the length of the uh, data to read, which again um, is four, because I'm reading a four byte integer. So let's put it all together now and let's call process vm read v. So we'll need to pass the PID as a PID type from the Nix crate. 
so uh, we can convert this PID into the PID type, which is this type here. And we'll need to call the from raw function, which converts an I32 into a PID. And I'll we'll also need to add that in. Okay, so I've added in the include for the PID type here, which I was missing. Uh, this is probably what your uh, includes are gonna look like there, or your uses, or whatever you wanna call it there. Uh, that's probably what they're gonna look like. Um, so as mentioned before, uh, local IOV and remote IOV need to be passed as references to lists of their respective types. So we'll need to use this syntax here. Of course, if you had an actual uh, list here, which I don't, I'm just reading single values, uh, you'll probably want to define the list as a separate variable. Okay, so process vm read v returns a result uh, enumerator. So we'll need to do the uh, expect here, and we'll just do the error message, which is failed to read memory. Oops. Okay, so, after this call, the data buffer, which we've defined here, will hold all the data from the remote process as bytes. So we can confirm that by writing this. And now let's run the game and test it out. So We'll first do a cargo build, and then uh, since we need pseudo permissions for uh, process read v or vm read v, sorry, uh, we need to do sudo dot slash target, and then debug, and then the name of the package. Okay, so uh, our data um, list here has outputted. We only have one byte in this case. Uh, and it says the first byte there is 100, which my health value is 100. So since I want to get the health value as an I32, I can read, uh, or sorry, I can use I32s from NE bytes to get an I32. Um, a lot of other types also have this method. So I can go from NE bytes and then do data there. And we'll say let health equal. And then we'll print it out. So let's build that and then, okay, in the game I have 100 health and then we'll run that and now we have our data thing here and then the I32 value that is built from that. So let's real quick um, hurt myself here. So now I have 90 health and let's rerun the program and there we go. I have 90 health. All right, thanks for watching. I'll leave links to the documentation covering the topics discussed here below.